contract and commercial management forms one of the uh, new uh, uh, services which is available from APMG. It fits in pretty well with some of the other services and sourcing advisory services that we provide. And we feel that it would be a good addition and an enhancement to knowledge for our customers. Uh, very quickly, uh, we started off in 1992. We work in about 49 countries globally with the uh, presence in about 10. Uh, since 1992, we would have trained and certified in excess of 150,000 people worldwide. The list uh, of services and the uh, certifications that we deal in are given out here. Uh, ITIL, Lean IT, ISO 20,000, ISO 27,000, COBIT, uh, and now IASCM are some of the predominantly famous and well-known best practices that we're working in. So without further ado, uh, I will introduce Girish Aras, the speaker. Uh, brief about him, he's been working now for the past 25 plus years. Uh, you can see the smiling person. He's got extensive experience as far as IT infrastructure is concerned. The last 10 years, he was working in Accenture. He's got a varied experience in various countries across the world, which will help him to be able to relate to some of the specific uh, circumstances and scenarios in what we'll be talk talking about. Uh, Girish is a... IACM certified and accredited trainer. He's a NITEL expert, Six Sigma black belt, and virtually A to Z of various IT best practices. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining in. Here we are, Girish Aras. Hey, thanks, Neil. That was a little more, uh, you know, introduction about me. <laughs> quickly, okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Um, quickly, you know, for the next uh, 30, 40 minutes. So let's see the contents that we are looking at today's session. We'll start with the industry facts and in, uh, contract and commercial management, and then we'll see a couple of uh, key business challenges that most of our organizations are facing today, uh, into in in this related area, and we'll also see the benefits that an organization or an individual level uh, can people get through the properly managing the contract and commercials. And one of the agenda of this course was, to, uh, this session was to introduce you to the, uh, one of the f formal course of IACCM, which is called Fundamentals of uh, Contract and Commercials. We'll go through the uh, curriculum uh, in detail. So during the session, if you have any questions, please use the chat box and we'll pick them in the end. Okay. Okay. I hope all of you are seeing the screen. So let's start with, you know, most of you know what is ISCCM is all about. So let's quick about ISCCM. ISCCM is an international association for contract and commercial management. So this team is basically a not-for-profit organization. You know, they realized a couple of years, years back that uh, every organization is doing their own way of uh, handling contract and commercials. But there is no specific way of doing things. You know, each one has adopted their own best practices internally, which fits their own organization. But a group of people came together. They started this group, uh, which is a not-for-profit uh, organization. They are developing some of the best practice in the industry in this particular area. Uh, so they have done recently a good research, you know, across the globe. They have met all the Fortune 500 companies and the, so let's see, so some of the key highlights, you know, what the research shows, which is very important for all of us to, you know, look into. The first element, if you see, by not doing, you know, not managing your contracts properly, you know, how much money you're losing on a, yearly basis. There are roughly about 9% of revenue loss, which every organization is, uh, you know, losing. It looks strange, you know, many times when you, uh, when you see a revenue loss, we'd always try to attribute for various aspects of the organization. It could be marketing or the sales division, and it could be delivery management and various aspects. But the, two, the end of the day, if you really see the root cause of all the revenue loss, you know, ends up with not managing your contracts properly. 
from the day one, you know, from the time you identify your suppliers till you close the contract. The various stages we'll go through shortly. That's one of the key reasons which, you know, this is the, the biggest highlight of the research that IACCM has done. And then you see various other factors here. You see, if you're not managing your contracts properly, okay, you may end up seeing a lot of project delays, cost overruns. You see failures in the projects. Normally you pick up a project, it fails off the way. And a lot of claims and disputes. All these reasons, you know, most of the people pick up a, you know, study, post-mortem exercise, you know, they try to find out why something failed. They always try to come out. We always try to find out the reason could be we not met the SLS properly or we are, we have not, you know, captured the requirement properly. The transition was wrong and various aspects. But end of the day, as I said earlier, the root cause, if you really see, if you take a deep dive into the situation, you'll find that somewhere on the downline, we missed, you know, managing our contracts properly. We'll see that those factors, which have whatever I'm talking, the factors that we are missing. And very interesting fact that you see here is about 89% of the respondents, whomever you ask in any organization, if you ask them, you go to procurement team, or you go to a delivery management team, if you ask them, how well are you doing today? In your, uh, in a, how are you managing your contracts? You will always hear this line item. Yes, we are doing good, but we need to improve a lot on them. So that clearly shows that, you know, the, this is one of the areas where we need to focus heavily. Okay, quickly, let me give an example, you know, that makes more, you know, uh, one of the clients that I was working on earlier on the project delay, uh, just to understand the importance of the contract and commercials. Okay, so there was a healthcare industry, you know, this one of the client uh, uh, is part of the healthcare industry. They picked up uh, outsourcing as their, uh, you know, business model to reduce the cost uh, and as well as to focus on their core uh, business activities. And they went on the... Uh, bidding activities, they selected the service provider, they, they wanted to move all their IT environment to offshore locations like India and Philippines and other places. Solutions were accepted and then contract was signed between this healthcare client and the service provider. And then the transition started. When the, during the end of the transition, before going live, both client and service provider realized there is something major element they missed in the, throughout the exercise. And they stopped the project off the way for a simple reason. You know, the contract manage the, all the contract documents were kept only with the legal team. They were kept only at the procurement team. It was not disclosed to the transition team. So what transition team got is just a subset of the contract management. They just had what services they need to provide. They just had uh, what SLS they need to manage, but they never had a couple of key terms and conditions, which are a very key element for all the year, you know, divisions of the organization. They missed on a key term and condition and the old exercise they started doing again. And there was a big loss for both the client as well as the service provider. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say is the visibility of the contract documents across your organization is one of the key issue. You know, that's what you face in uh, most of the organization. In my experience, when I was doing consulting, you know, one of the questions that I ask normally to all the delivery managers, have you seen the contract that you're delivering? You know, most of them have the SLA document. They know what is what are the service they need to offer. Probably you may hear from most of you, I'm sure, you may have not seen the contract, but there is a pressure for you to be more innovative. There is a pressure for you to reduce the cost. Yeah, there is a pressure for you to sell more services. So the bottom line, the question is, if we don't have the contract, if you don't understand the contracts properly at whatever level we are, we may be a delivery management or a solutions or the transition. If you don't understand the business objective, why customers really coming to us, right? We cannot be more innovative. Yeah, brilliant. So please push, put your questions. Uh, the chat box will pick them in the later. I'm sure you might be having a lot of questions related to this subject. Yeah, feel free to put those questions there. I'm just moving on to the next slide. Let's see a couple of other business challenges that uh, most of us are facing today. I'm sure I see a lot of uh, participants here in this group. Uh, some of them are from uh, IT enabled services. Okay, I'm sure you'll agree to this fact, the very first bullet item that I have there. If you really want to you know, manage your business processes, if you're a client, I'm sure you'll end up having multiple vendors supporting you. Let's take a simple example of, uh, if you want uh, suppliers to manage your data center, you cannot find a single vendor. It's very difficult in current scenarios. So we'll end up having multiple vendors, probably 
your uh, CRM applications. You engage a service provider to support your applications. You engage service uh, in a vendor B to support your servers and networks. There is supplier C supporting your EMC Clarion box or a VMware ESXOs and the various part of it. But the challenge is when something goes wrong, if there is a major incident, you always see this, you know, in the command center, people are passing their issues. It's not our problem. It's problem is with the storage team and the storage passing to the network team. Now, if you, and you bring the problem management, they try to do some post-mortem and try to find the root cause. But again, here, if you really take a deep dive into the situation, problems lies with the people who actually signed the contract. The people did not, you know, develop the contract to favor the business objective. They went on developing this contract just to meet the, you know, support the component level, not at the service level. So this is one of the key business challenges in most of the IT enabled services are facing. So when you're developing contracts, we need to clearly identify who is your prime contractor, who is the subcontract, who takes the ownership of the entire services. These are all the elements which normally we slip. So that's one of the key things that we need to work on. The other one is, as I said, upsell pressure. I'm sure you all agree that, uh, you know, increasing the revenue, it's a no more a job of a sales team and a marketing. And of course, they are there. They are the uh, backbone of this, but there is always a pressure for even delivery managers. I'm sure most of your town halls, your leadership is constantly telling you that please sell more services, identify opportunity for the new services. Now that's the question. Is that delivery manager or the operations manager who's completely focused on the technical stuff, incident management, change management regularly, how we can identify new opportunities? He has never seen the contract. That's the bottom line. Yeah. So it's a very important. You need to empower all your delivery managers and operations managers at the contract management level. They need to understand why a client is really coming to us. Is it just to support the server or the network? Or he wants to increase his revenue or the reduce the operating cost? See, this is one of the key business challenges that people are facing. And there are other challenges like you need to constantly work on cost effective solutions. You constantly see unhappy customers. I just want to give one example there. It's this one of the client, you know, there was a SLA review meeting. The supplier always goes with SLA numbers. He says, we met SLA for last 12 months. Our numbers are fantastic, but client is still unhappy. You may face the situation many times, right? You always see that your numbers are very good. As a supplier, you see that your numbers are great. You're doing fantastic job. You're showing a lot of cost reductions in the process, but client is still thinking, shall I move to somebody else? What is stopping? If you really see that more, if you constantly focus on SLA, right? If you miss out on the business objective, what customer wanted you to help him to improve his uh, revenue, to meet his business objective, but we stuck with the SLA. These are the key elements which are part of the contract management. We will cover more when you planning to join this course, those key elements. And then, so of course, there's a, always a challenge for you to be more innovative, okay? So this is the question we need to ask ourselves at the leadership level or the management level. We need to ask this question, is my organization empowered enough, right? To sell more services, to maintain a better relationship with customer, right? Not just doing the day-to-day -day activities, but overall, can we meet what customer is really looking from us? At the same time, it's not just that you do everything for the customer. At the same time, your business objective, your organization objectives, can you meet business objective of the customer more profitably? That's the right word. Okay, there are a lot more complexities if you are getting into it. Let me quickly give you an idea, you know, statement for what is content. I think we missed on that. If anybody wants to define what is contract, it looks like this. A contract is a legal obligation between two or more parties to achieve economic value for both the parties. See, that's the best statement. It's not just a legal obligation uh, between them, but why we, have, we are getting into contract to bring more business value to both the sides. But most of the time it's misunderstood. If you see a lot of small contracts which goes with commodity level and other level, it's always people see that contract is a way to control the weak, weaker party. You know, that's where the old uh, business value falls down. The contract is not you know, supposed to be used to control the weaker party. It's basically to bring a business value for both the parties. 
Yeah. So when you are achieving, there are some of the challenges, complexities that you find if you are dealing with at the international level. You know, most of outsourcing, you know, the, which is happening. Just to give an example, the uh, out, offshore locations like India, Romania, Poland, or Manila, Sao Paulo, and you have your clients in a different. Uh, developed countries in the US, UK, and other places. When you're dealing, training across the international level, you see the couple of, couple of key challenges, legislative challenges. There are some countries, you cannot go with the fixed prices, and it's very interesting. And there are territorial restrictions. I just put a few examples here. See, if you're working with Indonesia or Bahrain, you know, these are the, uh, the data which you can, you'll find in the ISCCM portal, you can get more details over there. You can have only one agent, very interesting. You cannot have a multiple agents for the distribution. And other pieces, the Belgium, these are some facts here. Now, if you want to terminate an agent in Belgium, you have to pay him a, couple, in a good amount of money. We are not saying they're good or bad, but this is the system which runs in many countries. You have to adapt your uh, you know, framework accordingly. Right? And if you see the Ecuador, very interesting. Only the representative has the right to terminate. Very interesting. If you are a, in a product organization, you want to sell your product in a Ecuador, you engage an agent, but later on if you want to break it, but that's not your choice. It's a choice of the agent, whether he wants to continue or not. Yeah? There are many other facts. So the example is, could be in even the Middle East. You know, if you want to engage multiple agents, yes, possible, but you, can, you cannot move to another agent unless you close all the legal terms with the existing one. There are very, these are things which are very complicated and what am I there where we need to address. And of course, when you're, I'm just putting these thoughts because from the uh, delivery management point of view, you know, even the operations management point of view, you always have this question. Do I need to know this contract in so detail? Answer is yes. No, not into a level that where you're going to become a champion in contracts, but you need to understand the basics of uh, these contracts because you are responsible towards the contract that you have signed with the client. You know, if you're planning to expand your business and you, you want to sell a new service to your client, uh, the client is operating in a country uh, from the current location. He may be operating from in a Taiwan or Indonesia in different locations. So you can't, cannot just go and sell your service. You cannot make a business case just that, yes, this is a new opportunity that we're going to sell, but you need to understand those basic laws. Okay. So this course, as I said, when you plan to attend and we'll cover the, which are the laws available. So there are three major things. The one is uh, CISD, which is uh, created by UN uh, on contracts for the international sales and goods. There is one more called UCC, which is Uniform Commercial Code. UCC is heavily used in US states. And CSA, at this moment, around 70 plus countries have adopted uh, CISD and there are European Union law. There are plenty more. There is a Chinese law as well. Yeah. Th let me give a quick example, the difference between this so that, you know, it can be an eye opener. So if you are in US, you know, if you are engaging a supplier in US, okay, and assuming that supplier is not doing his job as expected, if you want to go to the court, right, the court expect you need to have a written contract between both the parties. If the cost of the contract is more than $500, you see, if it's the contract is less than $500, the court system will not accept it. But if you're following CISD, right? CISD takes even the uh, verbal contract. You might have just said, okay, this is the amount I pay and this is the work, yeah? And if even though there is a written document, CASD upholds it. So you need to understand these basics. As I said, we don't want to make you as an expert in contracts, but these things help you when you are into upselling uh, new services. So what things go wrong? You see, there are many things which we may go wrong if you're not understanding this basic clause. One of the parties does not fulfill its obligations. Now, does it hold in the court system or not? It depends on the law. The contract is not entirely clear and what was included in the deal. Someone claims infringement of the copyright, trademark, patent. See all the things varies from different, different law systems that you're you know, applying into your contract. What if customer does not pay? What happens? The law that you choose in your contract, you know, that changes for all these uh, things which are going wrong. Yeah. 
Okay, let's see now what ISCCM is helping us. We know that there are so many things, so much of complexities in the uh, contract. There are law system, there's, uh, I mean, the legislative stuff, right? Now, ISCCM has come together, as I said, they are developing some of the best practices that people have to adopt, both the buyer as well as the seller side. Okay, there's a good research has been done. What is the best practice? Yeah. In a nutshell, if you look at contract management, it's a discipline where it focuses on heavily on the commercial, the financial aspects, the legal aspects of it. And one of the key things that I want to emphasize on is the requirement or the opportunity analysis. So this is where the most of the contracts fail. If you see the, I can say around 90% of them, when you say contracts fail, if you closely observe, it's because of not focusing on the requirement stage. Getting a wrong requirement from a wrong person, it always lead to a disaster. Okay, so requirement gathering and also analysis of the opportunity is one of the key stage in our contract management. And there are negotiations, you have to prepare all the relevant documents, the bidding documents, and you have to get onto a lot of agreements. If there are confidential staff, you need to have an NDA. Yeah, there are licensing agreements and so on. And finally, the, uh, the whole contract management is to build a better relationship between both the parties. Of course, not just the having a good relation uh, without impacting business value. It's a good relationship with uh, better economic value for both sides. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So some of the benefits, if you have a, a very good contract management in place, of course, there is a greater value for money for both the parties. There is a reduced crisis management. You're not seeing surprises suddenly. There is a decreased level of risks. Yeah, there is effective implementation of uh, all the changes that you have agreed with the, both the parties. Early identification of and resolution of poor contract performance. You're not seeing the something has failed at the end. Very interesting fact that ISCM has shown in the research that you can't believe most of the disputes which are happening between both the parties around 45% of them are because of delivery. That's very interesting. So the contract, you know, customers showing unhappiness or suppliers raising a dispute, it's because of the delivery or the acceptance. So not agreeing to the with the customer, what exactly are delivering and not agreeing with what is the acceptance level. And these are the key challenges. Yeah, if you have a better contract management, you'll be able to foresee them and you'll be able to fix in between itself. Yeah, and there is a constant learning. Good. So now, what does ISCCM say? So they work. Let's quickly go through. This is the, the one of the agenda of this uh, webinar is to help you understand uh, the course that uh, coming up uh, with Quint. Yeah. So uh, every contract management, if you see them as a life cycle stage, you you see these five stages. There is initiation phase. There is a bid phase. There is a develop, negotiation, and the management. The management is typically here, it is the transition and the uh, supporting the delivery management here. Negotiation, develop, and bid, most of the time, they go in hand in hand in parallel. They're not, some of some activities go in sequential, some of them. In fact, negotiation may start at the beginning itself. Yeah, we'll quickly go through each one of this and uh, what we will cover in the course, the three-day session. Uh, almost half a day is dedicated for each of these phases. Initiation scope. This heavily focused at the both side, you know, buyer, even if you're a buyer or a supplier, you know, here's where you start. You want to meet your business objective, you're thinking, should I buy it? Should I build it myself? Or does it make sense for me to outsource this to some offshore location? Or should I push it to near shore or the onshore? There are various outsourcing models you have, or it could be yeah, developing yourself, in-house everything. Yeah, this is where you start looking at, and if you don't have much information about it as a buyer, you start floating the request for information from the supplier. At this stage, you're not sure yet, you're trying to explore things, okay? And one of the key things is the requirement analysis, understanding the requirement. As I said, this is the key element in the initiation phase. As a supplier, when you get into a client place, how are you going to set your approach? What are you going to study? Where do you start? I can give an example of ITs. You know, most of you I see here are IT enabled services guys. 
if you as a consultant, you're jumping into a client place and you want to uh, resolve his issues or you want to provide sub support his uh, business objective, where do you start, right? Are you going to start with setting his data center products? Are you going to start with how much money is, how much salary is he spending for his team, right? How much license he has got? Are you going to study his application environment or the data environment? There is a structured approach for how you need to study a client, right? So that you can identify the right opportunities so that you can provide the right solution, yeah? So we will study that more uh, in the course. So that's one of the key activity of the initiate scope. And you also take a terms audit. What are the key terms that we need to get on at this stage itself? Even while you're looking for information from the suppliers. So you're also going to give a lot of information from your side, from the client side. So do you need to have an NDA at this stage, non-disclosure agreement by various aspects? Yeah. So the second phase is the bid scope. This is where you develop a request for proposals. I'm sure most of you know the difference. If it's a request for quote, so the client knows the solution already, what he's looking at is only the cost of the solution. And uh, if client has only objective in mind, he wants to increase his sales or reduce the cost, but he doesn't know how to do it, probably he'll float a request for a proposal, yeah? And there are bidder configurations in a conference and you award a contract based on your evaluation of, you know, all that methods. So that's a big phase. The scope is on a much larger in many organizations. The whole process is also called tender in, uh, uh, we call this in a private sector or the government sectors. And there is a develop scope. So once you have initiation done and the bid is now it's a bid and develop, it goes hands in hand. And this is where you develop all those documents that are relevant to uh, the contract. Terms and conditions are developed. You develop your statement of work, right? The SLS are produced. You're not negotiated yet, but you understand the client requirement very well now. Now you, you are ready with all the relevant documents, you know, to get into the signing on the con, you know, contract stage in the end. Yeah. Negotiation. This is one of the critical things most of them, most of them suffer because we think I'm not good at negotiation. You know, normally we hear this word. Some people say that I am very good at negotiation. Now the question is that what? What is negotiation is all about? Negotiation is again, you know, it's not to be thinking through biased way. It's that I am good and I can control this man with a certain loss. That's not going to work. Negotiation is what is good for both the parties, what we can deliver. It's about what, what we can deliver. It's not about all that, that I can provide. What is my strength and can it be, it will be deliverable? That's the only question. So reaching that stage is the negotiation. Many times people walk off. I know that the demand is very high, I cannot provide, and it makes sense. You just move away from the negotiation or from the deal itself. So there are different methods in negotiation. Yeah, there are principled approach and positional approach. There are many method techniques. We will cover them as you're planning, yeah? And after the negotiation stage, that's when you strike a deal, you sign the contract. And the, both the parties knows exactly what they're supposed to deliver, yeah? With all the terms and conditions, pricing is agreed, and the next stage is not to enjoy now, jump with the party. This is a bigger task now. You just signed the contract. Now you have to move them. In a, in a typical outsourcing industry, you sign the contract. Now you have to move all these people. You, know, you have to set up your uh, uh, environment in uh, offshore locations, hiring people, technology implementation, process implementation, your knowledge transfer activities, a lot more. So you, you, manage, you start with transition and ongoing Whatever changes happens, you can, you know, you make them with a better change control mechanism in place. And once you're reaching towards the end of the contract, you know, how to handle disputes. It is arbitration that you are going to look or you're getting into the court system, law system, and finally there are a lot of lessons learned. Okay. So these are the five stages that you will learn in detail. Yeah. So three days course where the, what I'm thinking is what will happen to you? What is the knowledge that you carry when you complete the course? You will be empowered. You will understand the overall complete contract management life cycle. You'll come to know the importance of contract documents, visibility of that at all the levels. I'm not saying the uh, confidential information, anything which is required. You'll understand the importance of capturing the requirement, importance of the negotiation. Yeah. So you'll be able to be more innovative in your current role, yeah?
Okay, a little bit more on the course that we were thinking uh, in uh, this course, which is offered by ICCM. It's a certification course. Uh, there is a fundamental, so it's called Fundamentals of Contract and Commercials Management, a three days classroom session. Uh, end of the session, you have an exam, which is conducted by ICCM through APMG. Yeah, so there are 50 questions, 40 minutes. You have to hit 35, so that's a 70%. They're all objective types, it's a closed book. And once you complete this exam, you'll be awarded a certification from ISSM, which is a globally recognized certificate. Yeah. With that, I have come to the end of the slide. Okay. I will leave it to you if you have any questions and I'm ready to take. Yeah, I can see a lot of questions and uh, coming up. Somebody wanted the, uh, the sessions, the slides, and also the prize and other details. We will come back to you. Uh, our team in Quint and they'll reach out to you for all these details. And uh, this slide will be available to you. Yeah. For more details on um, this, uh, you can get it from ISCM portal. You can go to ISCM.com, and you and you can also touch base with us offline. I can give you more details. I see a question called, uh, what is the acceptance level of the certification? Are you looking at the, uh, the global recognition of this? I think if you're looking at the, if that's the question, then this is one of the uh, a very valued certificate in the industry. Uh, so there are around 30,000 members already uh, enrolled as a membership with this ISUCM and a lot many are joining. Uh, so that way it's a globally recognized certificate across all the organizations uh, worldwide. I see a question called, who is the target audience? It's a very good question. Let me tell you, see, I want to a little bit, just two minutes on this. Now, even if you look at not just the organization level, look at individually. I'm sure most of you want to grow up in your career ladder. Have you observed some of the people who really went up the ladder much quicker? What is the knowledge they're carrying? It's about the contract management. If, if you have started your life as a technical background, you always see a shift, right? From technology to management and management to the leadership. The, from technology to management, is a, it was a smoother flow for you. But from management to the leadership, you need to have the knowledge of the contract management. You need to have the knowledge of the finance. These are the basic things which pushes you up to the top management. If you are very serious on the career aspirations, honestly, you, you need to have the uh, contract uh, and commercials knowledge. Yeah, And it's applicable to every layer. It's not just the uh, procurement team or the legal team. It's applicable to everyone at uh, all the layer in the organization. Yeah, I, I'm not able to pick up all the questions in this session. Definitely, I'll pick up a few. Whichever I'm not answering now, I'll come back to you guys uh, with that. There's one question I'll pick it up here. And there is a question from Shiv Kumar. He says, tech people generally leave it to the contract legal administrators to deal with contract and commercial. So that's, that's the biggest issue in every organization. Okay, if you leave this to and procurement and the legal team, the question is how confident they are that you will be delivering them Okay, at very beginning stage itself, at the initiation stage itself, right? All your ops managers should be involved, not in complete sense, at least the contract managers who are working on it, they need to coordinate with all the relevant parties. It's a very valid question. Uh, 
I see another question. Sorry, I'll pick up this last question. He says, can you elaborate more on the win-win situation? What criteria needs to be followed? Of course, it's a long, uh, I need to explain you, but I can take it offline. But quickly, I can tell you what is win-win situation is. Both the parties are happy end of the day. They are meeting their economic value. How do you achieve it? As a supplier, you don't say yes to everything. You say yes only if you are able to meet this. And the customer side itself is not using the contract to hold you responsible. You know, it's not uh, controlling someone. When both the parties, you know, achieve that business value, then that's called win-win situation. There's a question, a very good question from Abhay Chaudhary. They say, will it applicable for non-IT organization? Of course, I just picked up IT as an example because uh, I see most of the participants here from IT. Contracts, tell me the place where there is a contract. It could be oil and gas companies, or you, you could be in any you are a resourcing company, your education institute, or a communication technology. You name the industry today, you always have the supplier and the buyer relationship. And it applies to every layer, it's not just the IT organization. Okay, so so there are all these questions. I'm sure I'll come back to you guys. So I will uh, uh, respond to you. I think we have the, your email IDs in the contact. Yeah, so feel uh, free uh, yeah, when you have any questions, talk to me directly. I can give you more details later. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time.